Hello people, hello soccer fans, hello football fans. Today I'm Vladislav and today we're gonna talk about the 2010 FIFA World Cup. So, to put it simply, the winner was Spain. It was their first ever final, it was their first ever victory. Um, and that is probably Spain's golden generation, which I'm gonna get into later. I'm gonna explain this in the video. Spain this is the greatest period for Spain ever. They haven't won the World Cup before, they haven't been really a major nation up until the 2010s, even the 2000s. Um, um, so in 2008 Euros, they won it. That was, that was the, the first Euro won by Spain. Then they won the World Cup and in 2012 they won the World Cup again. Uh, not the World Cup, the Euros again. So they won three consecutive major tournaments, which is one of the greatest uh, achievements ever by Spain. A lot of players uh, were won it, and yeah. So the 2008, uh, the 2010 World Cup was the birthplace of many great things. For example, uh, uh, Spain's dominance, uh, Germany fell. Uh, Netherlands as a country began to began to like revive themselves because they underperformed majorly before. Also, it was the birthplace of the Shakira and Gerard Pique duo and their family. Uh, the tournament itself was uh, pretty, uh, pretty, pretty, pretty. Not it was in South Africa. Of course, there were some bribings, bribings, and allegations in FIFA. And several years later, Seb Blatter was uh, convicted, but uh, that I'll not get into corruption in FIFA that much. Um, the matches were also great. I don't think it gets on the 2006 uh, World Cup level, but um, it's important to say that uh, it was still a great World Cup. Uh, the top four scorers in the tournament had each five goals. Uh, the golden boot went to Thomas Müller, uh, who went, who had three assists uh, and also four goals. Uh, the silver boot went for the second most goals went to David Villa of Spain, uh, and the bronze boot went to Wesley Snyder of the Netherlands. Uh, uh, on the Netherlands, yeah. Uh, only for 145 goals were scored at the South Africa 2010, the lowest of any FIFA World Cup since the tournament switched to 32 teams. Um, this continued a downward trend uh, since the first uh, 32 team finals were held tw 12 years earlier. And I mean, it's not that the goals are important to keep the audience entertained, and that's really it. So the standings were the following: Spain were first, Netherlands were second, Uruguay, uh, Germany were uh, third, Uruguay were fourth, Argentina were fifth, and so on. Brazil were sixth. And the biggest surprises are probably Ghana and Paraguay being respectively seventh and eighth. So let's continue on. Um, as I said before, nothing really interesting about the. It was a South Africa tournament, they did well with it, hosting it, it was ranked as 9 out of 10 event, it was not the 2006 uh, event, but that doesn't matter. So let's continue on with the grand, grand final. The final was between Spain and Netherlands, that meant several things. This was only, uh, uh, that was uh, both nations for both nations were, one of the nations were gonna win the title for the first time. Uh, it was the sixth final uh, to be uh, competed by two non-former champions. Uh, the Netherlands have lost two previous finals and this was their third loss. Uh, while Spain's best performance, as I said before, they didn't have much of a history in the tournament, was, was fourth place in the 1950s. 50s! It was the second consecutive all European final. As I mentioned in the past video, we talked about where well, we talked about the 2006 uh, World Cup and the, the World Cup final, which is a very great video. You should watch it. Very great final, I should say so. 
Um, and and it was the first time a European uh, team won the trophy outside of Europe. So the finalists, Netherlands and ne the Netherlands and Spain, have met each other. Uh, have never met each other in a major tournaments. Um, it was the first time since the 1978 final that neither of the finalists had previously won the World Cup. As I said before, the Netherlands were runner-ups twice, losing to Germany and Argentina, Argentina, and so on. So, the route to the final for both teams was quite interesting. Um, Spain entered the 2010 World Cup as reigning cha uh, European champions. Um, they won all 10 of their matches in the qualifying campaign. Uh, the Netherlands won all... Eight of their qualifying matches because it, different groups, less uh, less nations, more nations. That that's why uh, they played uh, different uh, matches. Um, at the time of the final, all three uh, uh, all but three members of the Spanish squad play for clubs in Spain. Six of them playing for FC Barcelona, three playing for Real Madrid, one from Valencia, and one for Villarreal. The Netherlands squad drew its players from clubs in five European countries with just nine based in the Netherlands. Six playing in Germany, five in England, two in Italy and one in Spain. The match. Go uh, the match. Um, the match was not that great, except for its final. The match was a 0-0 draw in extra time. It, there were some chances created. Uh, Robin had one great, great chance, which he should have scored, but Iker Casillas proved that he's one of the greatest ever keepers, and he saved. Uh, and he saved uh, his uh, uh, attempt. But uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, also, there was Sergio Ramos Mitch, uh, missed a free header. Um, yeah, that's that's really it. Um, I mean, the final, uh... Ah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, uh, I, had a, <laughs> I had a bit of a brain block. So, up until the, um, up until the 110th minute, uh, the match was uh, really boring. It was like the match, uh, but 0-0, zero, zero, the score was 0-0, zero, zero, none goal scored, some many chances missed. And that's when uh, one of the greatest midfielders ever, Andres Iniesta, in my opinion, one of the greatest midfielders ever, uh, with the with the likes of Ch uh, Xavi too, uh, he scored an amazing volley uh, to to send uh, to give Spain their first ever uh, title, and uh, to the, much of the disdain of the Netherlands to have their third uh, loss. Mm. The captain of the of the Spain national team, Iker Casillas, was presented with the trophy. Uh, it was there were huge celebrations. Also, Spain were quite quite uh, res uh, showed quite much respect to the runner-ups, the Netherlands. Uh, and yeah, the goal itself is great. You should watch it. Andres Iniesta just put in his greatest ever performance, probably. Um, and he won the World Cup, much deservedly so. He's one of the greatest midfielders ever. I'll probably have to make a video on him. He's such a great, great player you should know about. He has the vision, he had the we he had the skills, he had the weak foot, he introduced a very well known skill move. Um And yeah, uh, about the viewership around 910 million viewers watched the final, which is a lot more than the last final. Uh, a lot, a lot of viewers, as always, the World Cup draws, draws so much. It unites people to watch it. It's interesting even from the neutral fans and so on. Um, so yeah, yeah, the final, as I said, was dramatic. Uh, dramatic, dramatic, dramatic. I remember at the time when I watched it, I was for the Netherlands, but I'm happy that Spain won. They deserved so. Also, some statistic for you: the Spain is the um, is the 
winner with the lowest amount of goals scored, only eight goals scored, only eight goals scored by the Spain team. Also, they are the lowest. Uh, they they conceded the lowest amount of goals with only two goals conceded the whole tournament, which is amazing. Their defense was really big back there with the likes of Gerard Pique, uh, Sergio Ramos, Carlos Puyo, uh, etc. Amazing, just simply amazing. And yeah, that's really it, I should say so. Um, we have a change of background, if you haven't seen in the last videos, so I didn't mention it. And that's all for today. Thank you for watching and see you guys next time with the Bulgarian national team history. Goodbye.